Hi, everyone, and welcome to this chapter of the Freefall Stack course. In this chapter, we're going to go ahead and install PostgreSQL on Windows 11. Now, the instructions I'm providing to you in this chapter are specific to Windows 11, so I cannot guarantee that they will work actually for an older version or a newer version of Windows. But if you are having trouble after following the steps in this um, or the instructions in, in this video, if you're having still issues with installing PostgreSQL, you could either read the official documentations on how to go about doing that, or you could just do the installation in a new way or whatever way is updated, and then follow along with the rest of the instructions in, in this chapter to set up your database, because they should kind of be a timeless, basically. So they, they should be applicable, even if you have a newer version of Windows, for instance. So, But for most of the parts, I think most of my followers who are on Windows, they're probably already on Windows. Uh, 11 already. So let's go ahead and talk a little bit about PostgreSQL and what it is. Is As they put it themselves, as Postgres team puts it itself, is uh, Postgres is world's most advanced relational database and it's also open source. So the knowledge that you have from Postgres for the most part is also going to be applicable to other uh, relational database management systems such as MySQL, for instance. But some of the commands that we're going to learn about Postgres in the later chapters are applicable only to Postgres. Okay. So the first thing that you're going to have to do is to go ahead and download the installer for Postgres. And I'm not going to show that part because that screen is kind of like not so relevant to this course and it may change in the future. Also, if the URL that I provided at the bottom of the screen for the installation doesn't exist anymore, you can just Google it. Just search for Windows install Postgres and you should land in the most updated URL for actually downloading the installer. Okay. So after downloading the installer, let's go ahead and do the installation. Now I have to warn you, I had already installed Postgres. And before the recording of this video, I tried to actually uninstall it so that I can also follow along with the instructions that I myself am providing to ensure that we're going through the same steps. But there may be some hiccups because as I mentioned, I'd already had Postgres installed. So let's just hope for the best in here. I'm gonna do some screen reshuffling in here. So let's see uh, if you can see my screen better. Then I'm going to go to my downloads folder and open this particular executable in order to start the installation of Postgres. Okay. So let's see if it opens now. So here we are welcomed with this screen. Let's just press next in here. Let's leave this installation directory. Okay. And then let's keep the components as they are pre selected in here and the data directory we're going to leave as well. Okay. And then it says existing data has been found uh, set to work. This directory and this configuration will be used. OK, perhaps it's better actually that I go and delete this directory Postgres SQL 14 data. OK, so I'm going to go to my finder in here and go into a C folder. And I'm going to go into program files x64, or is it in program files? Uh, let's, you don't probably have to do this, actually. It's because I already had program files. Um, from before, as I mentioned, program files, and we're going to go to Postgres. If I can find Postgres in here, uh, if you you probably already seeing it, but I'm not seeing it. Postgres SQL 14. So let's see if I can actually delete this folder completely. So Postgres, okay, it's deleted, and then I'm going to close the installation and actually going to start the installer afresh. Okay, so that. Hopefully, the steps that I'm going to show you are the same steps that I actually have to take myself also during the installation process. So let's see if we can now go through a fresh installation process in here. OK, that's really good. Now, in here, you need to specify a, because you see Postgres creates a new user for you called Postgres, and then you need to set a password for that user. So in here, I'm going to set a new password. So please just ensure that you're going to remember this password that you're setting in here. OK. And when we go to the port, the default port is 5432. Let's just leave it as it is. And then use the default locale as well. You don't have to change this at all. Let's just leave it as default unless you really want to. Okay. Now what we're going to do is just to go through with the installation and then press the next button in here so that Postgres can install all the required components um, that it needs. And I'm just going to be quiet in here now. Let it uh, let Postgres installer do its thing, and then we'll continue after that. All right. Now I can see the installation has succeeded. And then 
And when you get to the screen asking you to install Stack Builder, please go ahead and do do that because we're gonna install, we're gonna use Stack Builder to install a, a actually rather important component for this whole installation process. So please don't uncheck this. So let's do that. And this is gonna use now. It says welcome to Stack Builder. Okay, and. You open Stack Builder in here, and then you choose your Postgres installation on port 5432, which is the default port, OK? And it's telling you to, it's showing you the app, uh, basically the available components in here. Then what you need to do is to go ahead and install the ODBC, this driver in here. So let's see if you can actually find it. Uh, it should be required in trial spatial database server, database drivers, perhaps, yes. And then in here, let's go ahead and say PSQL ODBC 64-bit version. I'm going to select that and press Next. Download directory is completely fine in the default one. And then click the Next button to start the installation. Yes. So let's see if the installation process is then going to start soon, hopefully. At the moment, this window isn't really responding to my clicks, but perhaps it's because it's too busy doing the installation. So let's go ahead and do the installation for this ODBC driver as well. Should go quite fast, as you can see in here. Creating uninstaller, OK? Finish, and then press the Finish button there as well. So that's great. After installing a PSQL or Postgres uh, in here, we need to go ahead and set it up. So let's go ahead and open PG Admin in here. So start menu, PG Admin, and then press the Enter button to open PG Admin. Okay. So uh, it's going to ask us for an admin password soon. And it is very important that you set a password in here that you're going to remember. So I'm just going to set up an admin password uh, and then press the OK button in here. That's really good. So just keep in mind that you need to remember that password. So now that you're here, you can explore the servers to the left-hand side. You can see we have some PostgreSQL server to the left-hand side. So um, if you if you see PG Admin and with the stuff that I'm showing you here, then it means that your installation has been successful. But we have a little bit of uh, configuration still to do. So what we need to do now is to go ahead and add the PostgreSQL installation uh, folder into our path. So I'm going to go in here and just type path in, uh, in start menu, edit the system environment variables. And in this window, let's go ahead into environment variables, as you can see at the bottom of the screen. And then let's go to path variable and then press the edit button. Then you need to basically add the PostgreSQL folder, the installation folder, under, uh, and then backslash bin to your path. As you can see, I've already added it in here program files postgresql 14 backslash bin it is very important that you add the bin folder not the 14 folder or just post postgresql folder okay so after doing that now that now if you added the path you need to start up powershell and you don't have to have admin right so let's just say powershell in here powershell okay and then we're in powershell that's really good. Then what you'll need to do is to create a new user. So the command for that is create user, and then you say pu and Postgres, and then we call this user full stack course. Okay. Now, when I say you need to create a new user, this is basically a new user and a new role in Postgres. This has nothing to do with your Windows user. You, as, as you can see, I'm logged in with the user Vandlet in here, but I'm actually creating a new user called Full Stack Course in PostgreSQL. Okay, and then also in here, a dash u in here, Postgres means that I'm going to use the existing Postgres user in order to create this new user because it's very important that you actually have access already to Postgres user in order to set up a new user. Okay, so let's go ahead with this and see if. Uh, is successful. It asks for a password. I'm going to set the password exactly the same as the username. So I'm just going to say full stack course, full stack course, and enter it again. And then it asks for my password. And I'm going to say, which is your admin password? Remember, this is your, this is the admin password you set up in PG admin. Okay. So I'm going to set that up now and enter it. Do I have to enter it again? OK, so this command now went successfully and created this user for me. Otherwise, we would have done an error in here. OK, now that you've done that, now that you created the Postgres role yeah, or a, a user with Postgres, you also have to set up a database for that user. So let's go ahead and say create DB. 
as you can see at the bottom of the screen. And we're going to use, again, the Postgres user to do that. And we're going to say it is called full stack course, OK? And full stack course again in here with the W command in here. So I'm going to enter that. And I'm going to enter the Postgres uh, password, which is the PG admin uh, password. So I'm going to say the admin password in here. And this went ahead and created the database for me as well. So what we're doing in here really is that we're creating a user in, in PostgreSQL called full stack course. And then we're also creating a database for that user because it is very important when you log into PostgreSQL later, and you will see that it will basically need to have um, the same role with the same database in order to create a default connection. All right. So after doing this, after creating the user and the database, now we can actually log into Postgres using the PSQL command. So PSQL, as you can see in here, and it says password for user, but I don't actually want to use my current user to log into PSQL. So I'm going to exit this, clear the screen, and then say PSQL with the user of full stack course. I want to connect, OK? The password is full stack course. So now you can see we could connect to our um, to post, uh, Postgres SQL. So in order to get your connection information from PostgreSQL, you can issue the backslash MC command in here, which says we're now connected to the database full stack course as the user full stack course. So if you get to this point, then you have successfully installed uh, Postgres on your Windows machine. So if you also want to exit this, uh, this prompt, you can issue the backslash Q command in here. So, if you got into this point, then congratulations. You've successfully installed PostgreSQL on your Windows 11 installation. And if you have any problems with your uh, with the installation process, please do let me know in the comments at the bottom of the screen. Either me or someone from the community will surely be more than glad to help you out. So I hope you enjoyed this chapter, and I'll see you in the next one.